Hello. Uh, many people today are quite um, well taken back, basically, about uh, this business with um, uh, Edward Snowden, who was the whistleblower, who uh, um, basically blew the whistle on um, some of the uh, principles used in um, uh, in our personal data. Now, um, you know, many people may be concerned about um, you know the next time they log on to their bank account, you know, um, online, you know, just how safe is it? Just how Private is private, if you know what I mean. So um, you know, but um, you know, it's, it's quite worrying, really, isn't it? And it's a very much a, a controversial subject since um, the, you know the overall idea of um, maybe using that data was to um, locate any maybe acts of terrorism or, or that kind of thing, really, for personal security. But in today's digital world, you know, but banking, money transfers, and payments, as well as medical, corporate, and governmental records are secured by means of complex encryptions. The cipher text, in turn, is read by those who have the necessary decryption key to restore the data to its original form. Now, whereas a metal key usually has a set of grooves, a digital, digital key is a string of zeros and ones in various combinations. Now, longer keys have more combinations and are thus harder to crack. An 8-bit digit key, for example, has 256 possible combinations or permutations Whereas, um, like a 56-bit key, um, you know, has more than 72 quadrillion permutations. So, the present standard for encrypted web browsing is 128-bit keys, which have 4.7 sextillion uh, times more permutations than a 56-bit, you know, key. So, still, you know, this doesn't really protect our privacy, does it? And um, you know, security breaches do occur as well. And in 2008, for instance, uh, federal persecutors in the United States charged 11 men with uh, what is thought to be the largest ever case of identity theft. The group allegedly used laptop computers, wireless technology and special software to capture numbers from credit cards, debit cards, used for payments or cash registers. So even just going shopping has its, uh, has its um, you know, um, well, shall we say, uncertainties. So, um, so is your confidential data safe? Well, you know, I'll leave that for you to decide. But uh, to be sure, the encryptions protecting your bank accounts and online trans transactions are extremely hard to crack, yet much also depends on you. Now, now, interestingly, the Bible says that shrewd is for one that has seen the calamity and proceeds to conceal himself, but the inexperienced have passed along and must suffer the penalty. And you'll find that in Proverbs 22, verse 3. So, be shrewd and conceal yourself, as it were, from fraud and theft by doing at least the following. Here's a few pointers for you. Now, first of all, use an antivirus software on your computer. Now, that's very important. Now, you might think that's quite basic, but you'd be surprised just how many people don't use one, particularly when they think that they have to pay for that. But um, there are free ones available to download, you know, so um, you, know, you can just uh, tap into uh, one of the search engines, you know, uh, free them. Um, antivirus software. Now also employ a spyware detection program because that's not always the same thing as a, an antivirus and these can be free of charge as well. Now ensure that you have a good firewall. Now um, Windows uh, generally um, could be, has a firewall that's built in but you can get uh, you know better ones basically which are available for either purchase and such, such as um, you know uh, I don't know like Norton's internet security and um, AVG internet security, that kind of thing, which may be a little bit more, um, you know, better quality than the ones that are already built into Windows. Um, now, keep all of the above continually updated. Now, that is very important because it's, it's not just a case of getting the antivirus software on your computer, but it's also keeping it up to date because there's hundreds and hundreds of new viruses that come out each week. Now, um, beware, basically, of links or attachments in emails um, or instant messages, especially if the mail is unsolicited and asks for personal information or for verification of a password. You know, um, it's always best to ensure, first with the, the company, uh, you know, that you're with um, to make sure that they did actually send that email in the first place. Now, when transmitting sensitive data, such as a credit card details, use encrypted connections. Never send your credit card details 
or any other um, bank account details by email because that's just open to um, you know uh, breach and security. When transmitting um, other sensitive data, uh, such as maybe personal information that might not be fiscal, but um, it could be anything else really, anything of a personal nature um, that you might discuss with a personal confidant, such as your best friend or whatever, um, you know, always ensure that you do that a different way than using um, email and that kind of thing, because that can always be picked up on. Now, um, always choose passwords that are hard to guess. Now, um, they always say that you should change your password every so often, but if you've got a really, really good password, you might not need to do it as often. Um, now, what I mean by a good password is ones that you know, contain maybe a capital letter, uh, something like an ampersand, you know, like one of the ands, and signs, um, or an at, or, you know, a special character of a form like that. Uh, and also letters and numbers. Now, not words, because if you say, like, um, uh, I don't know, say if you've got a pet rabbit called George, for example, you know, um, don't, you know to don't use the password George the Rabbit, because basically anybody can maybe guess that, or the, uh, um, some kind of uh, software might be able to, um, you know, to, to pick that up. Now, um, so always use um, basically a scramble of letters and numbers and special characters. Now, that is a strong, healthy password, and it may not need... Um, changing as often. Now, um, so if you follow those basic precautions and apply any others that may be advisable now and in the future, you know, you act, uh, at least to improve your chances of winning your own battle for, confidential, for confidentiality and security. But, having said that, you know, um, we've got this, uh, you know, this case with a whistleblower here, you know, Edward Snowden, who's saying that, um, you know, our personal data is basically open to anybody to look at, um, you know, that are under the, um, shall we say, right conditions. Now, you know, um, so basically I think really, um, for me personally, I think that um, having any kind of form of personal details on the internet is a very much a no-no, because... Um, Basically, it means that everybody can see that. Because when you log on to a, uh, say, your, uh, your bank details um, online, you know, you might think, well, this is just private. This is just for me. It's, you know, they can see these details, but that's wrong because the bank staff can be able to see those details. Um, this, um, you know, prism or whatever, you know, they might be able to see those details, and there might be other various groups that can see those details as well. So, um, and just how trustable are those, um, you know, authorities? Don't forget they're made up of imperfect people. So, um, you know, and um, if they can see your bank account details, they might be able to do something with those, you know, should they be um, corrupt in any way. Um, so, you know, to be honest, um, I personally feel that um, having, you know, anything more than your name really on, um, you know, on the, uh, on the internet is too much. Basically, and um, you know, so really, you know, we want to be very, very careful of such, don't we? So, um, you know, uh, it's a very sort of sticky situation because we all use the internet. Um, you know, most of us do have a computer at home, and uh, you know, even if um, we don't have a computer at home, if when, as soon as we go into um, um, a store, use our credit card, we're practically using um, a data network, aren't we? Um, which uh, can be, um, you know, hacked into. So, uh, you know, and we've seen horror story stories, haven't we? Um, I think uh, TK Maxx is one of them, wasn't it, where they had some of their uh, information stolen, that kind of thing. So, it's, um, you know, it is a very, very, um, you know, worrying thing, really. And um, and don't forget that uh, Facebook uh, accounts, you know, such like that, um, you know, they can be hacked, you know, and if you've got details on there, such as, like, where you live, which school you went to, for date, you do a date of birth, where you're living now, your address, your telephone number, they can all be used for all sorts of, um, you know, uh, well, nefarious acts, really. So, um, you know, so do be careful when you're using the internet. Now, um, interest, interestingly, there's another description that I want to leave with you here and on this principle. Now, it's found in Proverbs 25, verse 9, and it says there, but do not reveal the confidential talk of another person. Now, are Microsoft and Google 
etc. Facebook, for example, are they actually following that principle? No, they're not really, are they? Not if they're giving, letting, letting out that information to others. Another one as well is uh, Yell.com, uh, which I had a personal experience recently with them, and um, you know how my data was actually sold onto uh, other companies. Um, but it was kind of like in the small print in the terms and conditions that they were able to do that. Now, you know, is that right? Is it wrong? Well, to be perfect, perfectly honest, I think it is wrong to sell your details onto to other parties, really, you know, and, you know, it shouldn't be done. But, uh, so this is what I mean, you've got to be very, very careful because, you know, you might think it might be just between you and Yale.com, but it may be actually passed on to other third party um, organisations as well. And if that information is gathered by somebody who is incorrupt, who's, who's corrupt at all, then, you know, then, you know, it's a huge breach of security, isn't it? So, um, so do be careful online and do apply Bible principles. Now, if you would like a free home Bible study at a time and place to suit you, uh, please navigate your browser to jw.org and um, you know, follow the links online. <laughs> I can just show you that your personal details won't be passed on to any other party. Um, but um, you know, but them, you know, in the uh, for purpose at jw.org and also yourself. So uh, otherwise, you can always contact your local branch of um, Jehovah's Witnesses to, uh, for a free home Bible study. And I hope that really helps you. Now I did that um, quite a number of years ago now, and um, you know, and I've uh, learned quite a great deal about the Bible, and um, you know, it's really built up um, my faith. And um, I, um, you know, I don't know really what I would have done without it, to be perfectly honest. As a result, but don't take my word for it. You know, you see for yourself just how the Bible principles, such as the ones that we've mentioned today, um, it will really benefit your life. You know, and. Um, uh, you, you know, you'll find that uh, you have a, a better quality of life and a, and a safer uh, life as well um, by applying those principles. I hope that helps you, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.